Good morning and thank you for attending police headquarters. My name is Constable Carolyn DeClute and I am here today to introduce Homicide Detective Rob North, who will be updating you on homicide number six of 2017. Detective? Thank you and good morning. I'm here to provide an update in relation to homicide number six for 2017. As some of you may be aware, on Wednesday, the 1st of February of this year, officers from 31 Division responded to a residential high rise located at 2999 Jane Street in the City of Toronto. That's located in the uh, northwest corner of the city. Once there, officers located 34 year old Damien McFarlane, suffering from at least one shotgun wound. And despite medical intervention, Mr. McFarlane was pronounced deceased at the scene. The homicide squad took carriage of the investigation and commenced a very thorough video and residential canvas along with our partners from the Toronto Community Housing Centre and members of 31 Division Community Response Unit. Despite this, we've been unable to identify the persons responsible for the murder of Mr. McFarlane. Therefore, we've reached a point in the investigation where we need to reach out to the community and request that if we have not spoken to you or if you can identify or have any uh, idea of who the three individuals are in these posters, we request that you contact the Homicide Squad at 416-808-7400. Based on the video we have to date in our investigation, we believe that these three males are the ones responsible for the murder of Mr. McFarlane. We also know that Mr. McFarlane was not the intended target of this cowardly act. He merely happened to be at the residence and answered the door at the time of the homicide. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to direct uh, your attention to the TV screen, if we could. I have uh, looped in four uh, video images of our suspects entering and then exiting the building uh, immediately before and immediately after the homicide. So the first image you have right here is gonna be suspect number one. He enters through the front lobby. Uh, he is described as uh, wearing white shoes, having blue plaid pajama bottoms on, and his um, face is, uh, is masked up. This individual then attends the rear of the building where he gains access to two other individuals uh, described as suspect number two and number three. Suspect number two is described as wearing all black with a red uh, heavy a backpack. It's described as a baller backpack um, and that's something that basketball players would use to sort of put a basketball on the bottom of it. Suspect number three when he enters the building is wearing a two-tone gray um, jacket and they immediately make their way up through uh, the building uh, using the back stairs to we believe the floor that Mr. McFarlane was on and then shortly thereafter, they exit the building via the same stairwell. As you can see in that video that just passed, suspect number three is also displaying characteristics of an armed person and that his left hand is holding something in close to his body. On this particular video, you see suspect, suspect number three come running by, and what you can see there is a, uh, the butt of what appears to be a shotgun with some green painter's tape uh, covering the handle. Suspects then flee the building, and uh, um, we're still trying to identify them. At this time, I have, if you have any questions, uh, please. was not the intended target. It looks like clearly they were going for an intended target. This is, this is premeditated? Yeah, at this point in time, uh, based on our investigation, we believe, uh, or what we know is there was two other males inside that apartment um, at minimum, and uh, one of those individuals was the intended target. Um, as far as you guys can tell, do you, or you do believe this is gang affiliated? Or? Well, that's one of the avenues we're looking into. Um, at this point in time, though, we have no information that it is gang related. Uh, however, uh, we do believe, uh, like I said, that, uh, that at least one of the individuals inside that residence was a target um, for this uh, homicide. That target being helpful to you in this investigation? 
Uh, what I can tell you is that we've interviewed some people in the residence. Some are fully cooperative, some less, uh, less so. So just I don't know, what you know about the target, is that, does that help you out at all to figure out who these guys are or what they were after? Or? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we've interviewed uh, the people that we believe were, were targets. Some um, agreed to be interviewed, some didn't agree to be interviewed. And um, obviously that forms part of our investigation as to why would you be a target uh, if you're inside an apartment. Do you think it was motivated by drugs or money or anything like that? It, it, we're not sure. I mean, uh, I, I would like to have that individual who refused uh, to be interviewed come in and speak with us and we could uh, fully uh, understand why they may have been a target. Um, that has not happened yet. I'm hopeful that, uh, that maybe it will happen still. Um, and that would obviously be one of the questions we'd ask them is why would somebody target you? Are you guys concerned about retaliation? Sorry? Are you guys concerned about retaliation? Um, there's always a fear of retaliation. Um, again, you, you need to do it, uh, go over each case individually um, and on a case-by-case -case basis determine the motive for the, for the homicide. And at this point in time, we really don't know what the motive was. Um, so, you know, as our investigation has progressed, um, should it become um, clear that uh, retaliation uh, may be a factor, we would let the appropriate people know. As we look at this video, uh, it's not only that these three guys show up, you can see that they have their faces covered, mm -hmm. hoodies, gloves, tape on the guns. I mean, these guys came ready. Yeah, And absolutely. it seems like they knew the building, like they knew there were cameras. Yep, yeah, actually, uh, it's a very valid point, and it's something that we have looked into is uh, people who have a history within the building that form part of our extensive uh, video canvas and, and, and our extensive residential canvas. I mean, we, we did the entire building at 2999 Jane Street in terms of uh, canvassing um, occupants, but we also did an extensive video canvas of the streets leading to and, and, and from the building, as well as video leading uh, to and from the building as well. And unfortunately, that's really not um, yielded uh, to us who those suspects are, which is why we're going public today. Um, what are you hoping that people will recognize from this video? Because clearly we can see that we, their faces are covered, right? right? So is it mannerisms, the way they walk, what are you hoping people recognize? What I'm hoping to do is uh, jog some people's memories as to what uh, their friends or, or family may have been doing that evening. Uh, suspect number one has the very distinct clothing, um, uh, being that he's wearing um, plaid pajamas going out. Suspect number two has very distinct baseball, or sorry, a basketball backpack on um, that, you know, may jog somebody's memory. At that time, they've seen that backpack, and then for some other reason or some reason unknown to them, shortly after the homicide, that backpack is no longer being used. Um, that along with the fact that um, there may be somebody out there who recognizes their walk, uh, their mannerisms as being a friend, uh, somebody they went to school with, or, or um, or someone they know from the community. Why do you think they didn't get the intended target? If the intended target was in the apartment at the time mm -hmm. and they killed the guy that opened the door, why, did they, why do you think they did not proceed further to go and take out whoever they were there for? Yeah, I don't know. I wish I, had, I, wish I knew the answer for that. I mean, I think uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, they really didn't waste a lot of time. As you mentioned, they looked like they knew what they were doing. They went up there, and as soon as the first person opened the door, unfortunately, it happened to be Mr. McFarland, and he was shot before he even got the door fully open. So I'm not even uh, um, confident that the suspects uh, knew or did not know who they were shooting, which makes it even more dangerous. Oh, okay. So, so does that lead you to believe that maybe it was like a, a hired type of thing, or they were just given a target to go get and? Again, I don't know. That's that's obviously uh, something that uh, you know we would look at in our investigation as to you know um, why that person was targeted. Um, I don't know if they were hired. I don't know um, what the background is. Uh, again, um, I'm hoping that somebody in the community has heard about this. Uh, people talk, and uh, if someone has heard about this or someone has uh, any information that may lead us to find out the motive behind the homicide, that they would contact us. Do you know, how, what was the timeline between when they went up to the apartment and when they left? Like, I mean, was it just like a few seconds? How much time was it? Yeah, I think it literally it's about five minutes. Uh, by the time they come in the front door, um, that suspect number one opens the door for two and three. They walk up the stairs to uh, Mr. McFarland's, or where Mr. McFarland is, and then uh, do the shooting, and then run back down and out, out the back door again. Probably five minutes maximum. Can you just tell us a little bit about the victim in terms of 
life, family. To come yeah, back. I can tell you that uh, Mr. McFarland was a was a hardworking male. He had a full time job, and he was uh, preparing to leave uh, the country the next morning, which is why he was at that that residence. He was not supposed to be there that night, so he's a completely innocent victim in this. Is there any family or anything like that? Uh, I can tell you he has, an, he has a family, he has an extended family, and uh, we have been in contact uh, with them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because he uh, is a family man and does have a full-time job and, and, and really uh, contributed to the community, um, they're sort of stumped as to why this would happen to him as well, um, even though we've told him that he, he's not the intended target. Um, how has his family in, in the, the last few months, how have they been? Well, I mean, obviously they want some answers as well, right? They have a family member who is, uh, who's been um, cowardly murdered uh, in our city for uh, no other reason than he answered the door. So, you know, just like us, they want some answers, but they want answers for a different reason. Sorry, just one more thing. You, just, you mentioned contributed to the community. Do you mean yeah. in terms of any other, aside from working in any other ways? Yeah, no, I can, I can tell you that he was, uh, in speaking with his family, uh, a really lovely gentleman. Um, like I said, he had a full-time job. He had uh, um, some business outside of the country that he was going to uh, going to attend to. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. This concludes today's conference. Thank you for attending. Uh, Post-news release will be released shortly with this video as well as photos.